denting bonding agents their classification so in this presentation we shall start from where we left in the previous presentation and here we'll cover the classification of dentin bonding agents the various generations of it so this chart is a brief overview of the first to seven generations of dental bonding agents their primary feature and example we shall have a look at each one of these in detail now the first generation of dentin bonding agents were introduced in the early 1950s the development of npg gma that is n phenyl glycine glycidyl with acrylate which is a surface active co-monomer was the basis of the first generation of dentinal adhesives theoretically npg gma was supposed to chelate with calcium in dentine to form a water resistant chemical bond to dentine but its drawback was the bond strength produced by this agent was very low only about 2 to 3 megapascals Clinically, this agent did not successfully bond composite resins to dentine. Examples of this group are Servident by SS White. The second generation dentinal adhesives were introduced in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The characteristic feature was the combination of phosphate in resin with calcium in smear layer. So the second generation dentinal adhesives attempted to bond chemically to either the inorganic or the organic components of dentine. So the dentine bonding agents bonding to the inorganic component of dentine contained a phosphate group or an amino group and the dentine bonding agents bonding to the organic component of dentine that is collagen consisted of isocyanate and carboxylic acid group. The major drawback of this second generation dentinal adhesives was that they produced only limited bond strengths of about 5 to 6 MPa. So clinical applications did not succeed primarily because of the lack of hydrolytic stability. Moreover, they primarily bonded to the smear layer and not to the underlying dentine. Examples of second generation dentine bonding agents are Clearfill Bond System F by Curacay. Bond Light by Care Sebron, Scotch Bond by 3M. Now, the second generation dentin bonding agents did not deal effectively with the smear layer. So, the third generation DBA attempted to deal with the smear layer as well as the dentinal fluid. For this, they employed two approaches: either modification of the smear layer to improve its properties, or the removal of the smear layer without disturbing the smear plugs that occlude the dentinal tubules. For this purpose they used milder acids because the idea was to avoid aggressive etching of dentine in order to prevent pulpal inflammation the agents belonging in this group are tenure the oxalate system so in this bonding agent an acidic solution of ferric oxalate was used in about 2.5% of nitric acid in order to alter the smear layer the dentine surface was then treated with an acetone solution of NTG GMA that is N paratolidine glycine glycidyl methacrylate and pyromelitic acid dimethacrylate gluma EDT is applied to remove the smear layer following which a glutaraldehyde or hema solution is applied to the dentine and cured with an unfilled bis GMA scotch bond 2 here the primer is an aqueous solution of hema acidified with malic acid The adhesive contains hema and bis GMA which bond to the primer and composite. And CNB meta bond. Here the smear layer is removed using 10% of citric acid and ferric chloride. Hema acts as a primer. So the third generation of DBA involved four steps for application. The first step was application of dentin conditioner which included hema with malic or nitric acid. Second step was the application of primer. third step was the application of the adhesive in the form of an unfilled resin and finally placement of a resin bonded composite moving on to fourth generation dentinal adhesives they were introduced in early to mid 1990s the adhesive resin is made up of bis gma udma that is urethane dimethacrylate along with tgdma and hema now fourth generation is based on the concept of total etch technique so we discussed in our previous presentation that total etch concept was introduced by dr takao fuziyama in 1979 
Let's take a detailed look at the total edge technique. The following cavity preparation with a burr, a smear layer is formed on the exposed dentinal surface. So the total edge concept involves etching of both the enamel and dentin simultaneously. So acid etching is done followed by rinsing. Acid etching is done using 37% of phosphoric acid for 15 seconds and the tooth is then washed and dried to leave the dentin surface moist so that it prevents the collapse of collagen fibers. So in the second image, you can see this is a diagrammatic representation of etched of etch dentin with exposed collagen fibers and below that you can see an electron microscopic image of the same. So the dentinal tubule ha has been opened up and the collagen fibers are exposed. The next step is the application of primer and adhesive followed by a composite. So the primer is applied which is made up of hydrophilic monomers dissolved in organic solvents. So because they are volatile in nature, the solvent displaces water from the collagen network and thus the primer can penetrate into the dentinal tubules, exposed tubules. And final step is the application of adhesive resin. Now this adhesive resin co-polymerizes with the prime dentine and also with the composite resin applied over it. So this brings us to the next concept that is formation of hybrid layer which was introduced by Dr. Nubo Nakabayashi in 1982. So in the third image you can see the restoration has been done. In the, at the top is the composite, below that is the dentinal adhesive and inside the dentinal tubule there is the resin microtags micro formed within the intertubular dentine. So this hybrid layer is composed of exposed collagen network and the resin tags of the intertubular dentine. These together form the hybrid layer. So it acts as a resin dentine interdiffusion zone. Another concept which was introduced in relation to fourth generation dentine bonding agents is the concept of wet bonding which was introduced by Kanka and Gwinnett in 1992. So following conditioning, if the dentine is completely dry, then so it appears like a Swiss cheese. Here you can see in the image, this is an air dried dentine with this collapse of collagen fibers. Acid etching of the dentine shrinks its volume by 65% as well as stiffness of the acid etched dentine matrix is only about 1%. The resulting layer of imperfect bonding is known as hybridoid region. And in the next image here you can see following re-wetting, this is how the dentine appears. So the concept of wet bonding introduced was that the residual water left on the acid edge dentine improves the bond strength, that is it can double the bond strength. For this purpose, acetone based primers with water chasing capacity are used. So when acetone or alcohol based primer is applied, to moist demineralized dentine then the water diffuses from the wet dentine into the acetone while the acetone diffuses into the demineralized dentine matrix. The examples of fourth generation dentine bonding agents are the ones based on the total edge concept and moist bonding technique like for example Scotch Bond Multipurpose, All Bond 2, Panavia 21 and Imperva Bond. Moving on to fifth generation dentine bonding agents. These were introduced in mid to late 1990s. These adhesives are a simplified version of the fourth, fourth generation adhesives. So in the fifth generation dentine adhesives, the, the primer and adhesive are present in the same bottle rather than two separate bottles as they were seen in fourth generation dentine adhesives. Though they require fewer steps to achieve dentine bonding, these agents are inferior to the fourth generation bonding agents in terms of their bond strengths. Examples of fifth generation dentinal adhesives are Single Bond by 3M, One Step by Bisco, Gluma Comfort Bond by Huris Kulzer and OptiBond Solo by Care. Sixth generation dentinal adhesives were introduced in early 2000s. These adhesives include self-etching primers where the etchant and primer are in one bottle and the adhesive resin is in another bottle whereas they also include the self-etching adhesives where the etchant, primer and adhesives all are in one bottle that is the all-in-one system. In sixth generation, 
It contains phosphate derivatives of hydrophilic monomers such as phenyl P and it also contains 50% HEMA or other hydrophilic monomers so they both etch and prime the dentine. The main advantages of 6th generation DBA is that they don't need acid etch with phosphoric acid so there is reduced post-operative sensitivity and also it is less technique sensitive as well. On the other hand, the disadvantages are it shows less effective bonding to enamel. Initial bond might deteriorate with aging which could lead to premature failures and it may inhibit the set of self-cure or dual cure resin materials. Examples of two-step system are prime and bond NT by Densply, clear fill SE bond by Curacay, Simplicity and Unifil Bond, whereas examples of single step, sixth generation DBA are Prom L Pop, Touch and Bond, Brush and Bond, and Zeno by Densply. The seventh generation tenting bonding agents were introduced in between late 2000 to early 2005. The system is quite similar to the sixth generation, but a desensitizing agent was added to overcome the problem of hypersensitivity. So it is a single component, no mix one-step application dentinal adhesive with an etchant, adhesive, desensitizer and photo initiator. The major drawback of 7th generation dentin bonding agents is that they are a complex nature of mixed solutions so they are more prone to phase separation and formation of droplets within adhesive layer. There is lack of polymerization thin film. Examples of 7th generation DBA are eye bond Xeno 4 by Densply, G Bond, complete by Cosmodent and OptiBond. And finally, 8th generation denting bonding agents. In 2010, Voco America introduced Voco Futura Bond DC. It is composed of nano fillers with filler size of about 12 nanometers. Larger dimension nano fillers of about 15 to 20 nanometers may cause cracks and decrease in the bond strength so the optimum filler size is 12 nanometer to be used as a dentin bonding agent the advantage of nano size fillers is that it increases the penetration of resin monomers and the hybrid layer thickness which in turn improves the mechanical properties of the bonding systems it has been observed that filled bonding agents produced higher bond strength these agents have longer shelf life and also aid in stress absorption. It is an all-in-one step system, so they limit the number of bottles to one like the 7th generation, so clinical time is also reduced. It is available as a single-use agent or for multiple use in a bottle. It comes with its separate instructions to be used for diet restoration and also to be used under indirect restorations like for cementation and for posts. So this was about denting bonding agents and their classification. Denting bonding agents have advanced greatly over the last two decades and can now provide predictable bonding to enamel and dentine. The mechanism of bonding is primarily micromechanical by formation of a hybrid layer. The various advances in adhesive technology have expanded the applications of denting bonding agents to include bonding of composite, ceramic as well as metallic restoration successfully to tooth structure. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.